Hey guys, it's Megan. Welcome back to what I hope is the start of sort of an adventurous video where I'm not quite sure of the TBR for this video yet, except for the first book that I'll show you in just a minute. But we're going to try to find some young adult books, whatever genre, I'm not sure, probably various genres that are actually good. You guys probably know I am a high school librarian. I want to read more young adult books this year because one, they're short, so it's easy to get through them. The first one I'm gonna show you, the audiobook is seven hours and or seven and a half. When I speed it up a little bit, it's literally five hours long. So that won't take very long to listen to when I have like almost two hours of listening time a day. So I'm thinking that I could read probably quite a few videos books not videos that's how late it is i'm tired <laughs> quite a few books for this video fingers crossed so let's just see if we can find some that are good i'm gonna say if i give it four or five stars it's good if i give it three stars it's like eh, very mediocre two or one is bad like two stars is really bad one star means i dnf'd it so there could be some dnfs in this video too the first book i'm gonna read is the naturals by jennifer lynn barnes why you ask because you know i read the inheritance games a year a year or two ago i didn't i didn't like it <laughs> i barely made it through it i don't remember anything about it except that uh well i kind of like remember the vague plot but that was about it i did not continue that series this is a four book series whereas the inheritance games was only three so we'll see i don't know if i can make it through all, all four books but i hear that it's really good some people say it's better than the inheritance games um i'm in the mood for kind of a fantasy not fantasy i've been reading a lot of fantasy and i'm in the mood for a mystery thriller kind of thing um, in fact i think every book i've read so far this year is fantasy yeah it has been all four books so far because it's you know it's february like beginning of beginning of february so january i read four fantasy so this is a young adult mystery thriller kind of thing and it's advertised as criminal minds for the ya world and i hear it's pretty intense like it may be gory i'm not really sure but i'm thinking i'm hoping it's like i hunt killers vibes i know i'm going to be comparing it to that i always talk about that book but oh my gosh i hunt killers is like my favorite thriller ever out of any thriller i've ever read including adult and young adult so <laughs> i'm going to be comparing it to that it's got a lot to live up to but on goodreads it has an average of 4.19 stars pretty good and actually really good and 92,000 ratings so it is really good now there's a little synopsis here that I've vaguely skimmed through and I think it says the premise sounds like it's gonna get hard to get past some of the stuff in the premise but I'll read it to you it's very short it says 17 year old Cassie is a natural at reading people I'm assuming that's why it's called the naturals I think that's the name of the whole series as well piecing together the tiniest details sounds like Sherlock Holmes she can tell you who you are and what you want but it's not a skill that she's ever taken seriously that is until the FBI come knocking they've begun a classified program that uses exceptional teenagers to crack infamous cold cases and they need Cassie the FBI the FBI needs this teenage girl I just don't I just don't know it sounds so ridiculous but okay let's just for the sake of it maybe we, if we can just get past that maybe it'll be okay what Cassie doesn't realize is that there's more at risk than a few unsolved homicides especially when she's sent to live with a group of teens whose gifts are as unusual as her own now that sounds cool sarcastic privileged Michael has a knack for reading emotions so I don't know if it's supernatural at all I guess we'll find out together although it's called naturals so not the supernaturals ironically so maybe this is not quite supernatural uh, which he uses to get inside Cassie's head and under her skin. Brooding Dean shares Cassie's gift for profiling but keeps her at arm's length. Soon it becomes clear that no one in the Naturals program is what they seem. And when a new killer strikes, danger looms closer than Cassie could ever have imagined. Caught in a lethal game of cat and mouse with a killer, the Naturals are going to have to use all of their gifts just to survive. And I just realized seven people I know have marked it as red. And oh no chloe from chloe frizzle only gave it three stars more love triangle less investigation than i was expecting no <laughs> i don't want a romance oh no it's a lot well i kind of but i like as far as if it's going to be a romance i actually do like love triangles sort of i think somebody else i know gave it four stars but that's a younger person now out of the people other people i follow let's see april maximus whatever she goes by on here she gave it five stars so that's a good sign. Amber from Books with Amber gave it four stars. Somebody else I know gave it four stars. And Destiny from Destiny Sidwell also gave it four stars. I'd be happy if I gave it four stars. But Chloe's review makes me really sad now. <laughs> it's a love triangle. I want it to be an investigation because we know how much I want it to be like I Hunt Killers. We're going to start with this book and we're just going to see how it goes. I'll update you maybe a couple times throughout. And fingers crossed we find a good one. I mean, is this one of those videos where it's like if I find a five star, then I can quit the video? If so, I might be doing this video for like two years. 
Okay, quick car update. I am 26% of the way through. Just started it last night. Uh, it's very, very fast to read. I am surprised. It's better than I expected. <laughs> now, obviously, I'm not that far into it or anything, and it's a four-book series, but I went ahead and looked for the second book. I can't find it, so I'm gonna have to see if I can figure out a way to get the audiobook because I really, really need it. I'm hoping that my uh, system that I use through my school has the audiobook because I don't have it on Libby or Hoopla for the second one, but I'm already planning on reading the second one, so I guess that's a good thing, but I really like the fact that there are different characters that kind of have different abilities like obviously they're not superpowers but like almost superpowers but they're natural at it you know so I do like that I don't want to spoil too much because I think it's fun to see what powers the characters do have but I could see where some of them kind of complement her powers but also there is somebody that has the exact same power as her so I think that's gonna be really interesting and he's so far like way more mysterious and I like the two guys that I'm sure will be the two love interests uh, I actually like this love triangle tr love triangle idea I'm glad I knew going into it though because if I hadn't expected it I would have been like oh no it's like the inheritance games all over again <laughs> which it does seem kind of similar to the inheritance games in some ways yeah so far so good I'm enjoying it I'm excited to keep going okay just a quick living room update I am 78% through the naturals I, I like it I like it a lot like four stars I can't believe it this vlog is already a success I never would have thought that I find would find a book that I actually enjoyed <laughs> And so far, this is this is really good. Like I said, it's on track to be four stars. I can't imagine anything would happen that would not make it four stars. It's so fast. It's so easy to read. The chapters are super short. Like, it's just really easy and really basic. There's like one storyline. I mean, kind of two, I suppose. There's sort of the romance and, well, and the people that she lives with and sort of their whole dynamic. And then there's also the actual, like, mystery that's going on with the serial killer. Um, and I like the way everything's coming together. Honestly, my favorite part, I, I really do actually like these characters. I feel like they're really, like, real people which is rare for me for young adult literature. <laughs> um, I do like the characters, which is always good if I can connect to them. So therefore I do care when they're like in scenes together, like there's tension between some characters or I'm like, ooh, how are these characters gonna interact? And I've never seen this comparison, but I do feel like it's got like an X-Men vibe, like just a little bit, just because like they're all at the same little place together and they all have not exactly powers, but like almost powers, you know, that they're really good at like one thing or another. And so, yeah, I just, I think it's sort of, Criminal Minds, which I've never actually seen, but I feel like it's this is like Criminal Minds, <laughs> meets um, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. It gives me those vibes a lot. Meets The Inheritance Games. I feel like this is similar in some ways to The Inheritance Games with the girl and the kind of love triangle with the two guys. But I like both the guys, whereas in the other one, I don't think I really cared. <laughs> but I like both the guys in this one. I'd say my the weakest thing is really the main character herself. But even then, she's not bad. Like, as a main character, I kind of like her. So, um, yeah, the two love interests, I'm actually really intrigued. Because usually there's one that I'm way rooting for more than the other. But, like, in this one, they're both kind of like bad and mysterious and but in like different ways so yeah i have to say i thought the love triangle would be way more prominent but it's not right now it's very much just more like in the background i have a feeling as the series goes on it will become more of a key player probably like the main plot <laughs> i mean maybe not the main plot but i have a feeling it'll be more important right now it's like it's there but i still don't feel like it's the main thing i still feel like this actual case with the serial killer is the main thing and it's getting really intense and like the main character is super involved in it now which is really giving me the i hunt killers vibes that i wanted so i would say that like i hunt killers would be really great for well it's great for anybody but i could see where it would appeal more to boys and i could see where is this where this one would appeal more to girls just because of that love triangle too and well the female main character but i like this book so much that I have decided to add it as another choice for Rita Palooza, which is the big library event I have at school. Usually I do newer books, but I do feel like this author's gotten so popular that some of her older books are getting more popular now. So and they've done in the Inheritance Games before for Rita Palooza. So I'm like, mm, I should probably do, you know, I don't want to do that one again, obviously. But I think going back to her older works would be good. I do think the students would be in, would enjoy this book a lot. And I'd already finalized all the Rita Palooza plans. I had seven books, which last year I only had six. So I thought, well, I don't really, I definitely don't need more the seven but I decided to add another one I'm gonna add this one it's gonna be a choice I literally bought six more copies we have one copy in the library I bought six more today on Amazon literally for $44 because I got a discount since I bought six of them so they were less than $10 a piece I was like for $44 I can add an extra option on for Rita Palooza and I think I can promote this one really really well since I've read it and talk about it and if I don't have anybody sign up to be a group leader I can be the group leader for this one since I just read it I'll update you again soon uh, as soon as I finish it Let's wrap up this book really quickly. You may be saying, Megan,
Megan, how do you have a physical copy of this? You did not in the previous clips. Oh, and it's literally falling apart. Well, the reason is because it was so good that I bought it for Rita Palooza, this event that we have at our school that we do usually, you know, between six to 10 books we have as choices for this event. I'd already picked out the seven books. That was actually kind of a lot of books. I thought seven would be plenty. Um, I'd add this as another option. Oh, this is messed up too. Shoot. Oh, well, it'll be fine. Um, I'd add it on because the book was so good that I was like, I have to, this has to be another choice. I already had another mystery thriller option on the list, but this was just so good that I had to add it. So anyway, The Naturals, I'm giving 4.5 stars for what it is. Compared to other thrillers, it's still, it's really good, but like it's young adult, obviously, but for what it was, it blew my expectations out of the water. My favorite parts about this book are the fact that no scene is unnecessary. Like there is no filler, no fluff. It is super short. It's so fast to read. It's so easy to read. The chapters are short. You know, I think that students will really, really get into this book. Um, the fact that it's a series, I'm so excited. Now, hopefully the rest of the series is as good. Like I Hunt Killers went really downhill. Always comp I'm comparing it to that book now, <laughs> but the two books, um, um, books two and three in that series were like you might as well just stop at book one <laughs> but I'm hoping that this one continues to be as good so I'm going to keep going with the series I won't do it for this video just because I want to try to find some other YA books in different series um, but I might pause on this video for a minute so that I can actually go read the rest of these well, hello there again. It's bedtime, but I just thought really quickly before I went to bed, I would update you about the audiobook that I just downloaded from Libby. And that is our next read for this vlog, which is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross, which is apparently a young adult fantasy romance. <laughs> Why should I read a young adult fantasy romance when I have clearly tried it many times and hated them? I don't know. Have I ever liked a young adult romance? No, I don't think so. New adult romance and maybe adult romance, maybe, <laughs> um, or fantasy romance, I should say. But I, I have very low expectations. I should have put this in a different video that's like books I'm probably going to DNF or something <laughs> because let's be real, my chances of making through this are pretty slim. But I thought the same thing about The Naturals and it went really well. So this has super high rating on Goodreads, 4.25 stars. The reviews are kind of all over the place though from people that I know. Some people I know have given it two stars, some people have given it four and five stars. I am gonna try it and I don't actually know what it's about. So in the next vlog or next clip in this vlog, I will let you know after I've like briefly started it. It's about an 11 hour audiobook, so it's definitely a little bit longer. Not obviously, that's not even too long, but a little longer than The Naturals. So yeah, it's a series. The series is called like Letters of Enchantment or something. I had no idea that that's what it was called until just now when I looked this up on Goodreads. But two is out we actually just got book two in in our library at school so you know it is going to be a series but oh the tagline is no god no creature no war can come between them is this a romeo and juliet retelling why do i want to say it is i don't know i'll let you know more about it in the next episode next episode the next clip when i'm not like sleepy and going to bed quick update before work this morning we just got back from disney world which is funny because you know i decided to have that as the backdrop behind me and i have disney earrings on they're like little ears like Mickey mini ears. <laughs> anyway, we just got back from Disney World yesterday. We've been gone for like five days and I did very little reading while we were gone and it's because this audiobook is not good. <laughs> also, it's hard to focus. Like it's hard to focus and plan your Disney trip while you're listening to an audiobook. Like I was trying to plan each day and stuff while I was getting ready in the mornings, but I <laughs> almost DNF'd Devon Rivals at 11%. I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna lie. The only reason I did not DNF this book is because it was great to fall asleep to. Like I was literally falling asleep listening to this book every single night <laughs> as, on my Florida trip, which you're like 11%. Well, that's why I'm only 11% because I only listened to like five minutes at a time. And then I'd be like, and I could be wide awake. I was like, man, I had way too much caffeine close to bedtime. I can't sleep just because of this book. <laughs> so last night I read a little bit more and I was like, okay, I could see where maybe the mythology is going to get kind of interesting. Maybe it's still, it's still not good, but it's not bad. So I got up this morning. I listened to a bunch more. I don't know. I'm probably 15 or 20% through now. And I'm like, okay, it's just kind of there. Like nothing's really happening, but it's not overtly like something I dislike. So right now it's just, it's just there. It's just something to listen to. I don't hate it, but I don't want to pick it up either, but I don't not want to pick it up. It's very strange. Kind of how I felt with like the first and second throne of glass books, sort of, which I wound up giving like 3.5 stars. So this, I suppose has hope. So I'm going to go wake up the child because it's 729. The latest I can let him sleep is 730. Um, and I'm going to continue this book. I thought it was Romeo and Juliet retelling, but so far, no, like besides the fact that the main characters are kind of rivals at this newspaper. Nothing else is <laughs> happening. I'm just like, I'm one, or nothing else happening related to Romeo and Juliet. I'm wondering if the main characters are going to actually be gods or something. Or like, 
I, I don't know because I mean why else is it called Divine Rivals but the mythology I think is going to get more interesting as we go so anyway I am going to continue and I will keep you updated. Okay I'm stuck in the parking lot at school and thought I would very quickly give you an update which is that I did indeed DNF where can I put you? Where you're not in the sun. <laughs> Maybe I'll put it over here. I did, did, I did indeed DNF Divine Rivals. It's been a while. I just forgot to tell you that I did so. And um, I'm filming this clip kind of late. So I honestly can't remember much about why I DNF'd it. Like I DNF'd it at 61%. So I counted it as a book I had read. I've been doing that lately, that if I'm over 50% or I've listened to like many, many hours of the book, then I'm counting it as a book I've read because that's just not fair to spend that many hours and then not have it add up to my total number of books. <laughs> so technically on Goodreads, I gave it one star because I've been doing that with everything I've DNF. Just to remember, hey, I DNF'd it. That means it's one star. But if I had finished it, I think it would have been like a two or 2.5. So, I mean, it's obviously not the worst book I've ever read. It was so mediocre and so forgettable. I didn't care about anything that was happening. It just, it read like historical fiction, not, did not care about the romance. There wasn't even that much romance. Did not care about the fantasy. There wasn't much fantasy. I feel like maybe I would like the second book better because it was more about the world building. Uh, that's what I hear anyway. So maybe I should have given it more of a chance, but it is definitely just not for me. It is not my style, not my jam. And I feel, you know, guilty, but <laughs> why, why not even read it though? This is my my fault we all know I don't like young adult fantasy romance so anyway on to the next book the third and probably final book for this video so we've had so far we've had one book that we actually really enjoyed we had a four, a four star which is crazy we're even 4.5 and then we had a DNF so maybe the next one will be I'm gonna predict somewhere probably in the middle okay so we're in the car <laughs> we are headed to Ashland for the weekend here is my situation <laughs> We had to stop and get a birthday cake for somebody. Mommy, mommy, see you in the next one. Yeah. Hang on just a mommy. second. So I'm starting my final book for this vlog. And that is a new young adult book, a relatively new release. I think it just came out, well, sometime in 2023. And it's called What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. I don't know anything by this author. I don't know if it's her first mommy, book. No, she wrote, oh, mommy, Woven in Moonlight. I've heard of that. Mommy, oh, it's red. Mommy. Elmo's red. He colored Elmo red. You're right. Elmo is supposed to be red. And anyway, this is, I thought it was set in ancient Egypt. It's not. It's set in the 1800s, but the character goes to ancient, e or not ancient, <laughs> the character goes to Egypt, and there's like a mystery, and it's supposed to be like the mummy, but with a, mommy maybe a pink. romance? Mommy's a pink. Nice. So, Indiana Jones-esque adventure through That's ancient pink. Egypt? Magic, mystery, because there's fan there's a fantasy element. There's magic. Like, there's magic in this world, no, kind of, but it's kind of died tidy. out. So, there's magic in this world that has died out, right? And uh, that the main character, like, knows about it or something. And she just found out, like, this is not a spoiler because it tells you in the plot synopsis. And it just happened. I just started the book this morning. I've only read, like, 20 pages, if that. And her parents have died, like, in the mommy. prologue. It says that she goes to Cairo after mommy, her parents mommy, died. Look, That's crazy. You better do another one. So she goes to ancient Egypt, not ancient Egypt, I keep saying that. She doesn't time travel. She just goes to Egypt. She goes to Cairo with her brother-in-law and like some other guy maybe that becomes the love interest. I don't know. It says the mummy meets death on the Nile in this lush, immersive historical fantasy filled with adventure, rivals to love or romance, and oh, shocking twists and zebra, turns. Zebra. <laughs> he sees a zebra. <laughs> wow, he's colored the whole thing. That's crazy. I'll update you when I get a little farther. Considering though how bad Divine Rivals was, and this sounds similar, but I love ancient Egypt. I love Egypt stuff so much. So we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. Hello, welcome to bedtime. Again, I'm like always in these Christmas pajamas. I don't even know. I have old lady pajamas. I'm so sorry you have to see this, but it's literally the only time I have to film <laughs> because the baby just went, to, I say the baby, he's a toddler. He's three years, he's not even a toddler now. He's a kid, he's three years old. Um, he just went down, see? There we go. I mean, he's trying. Every now and then he, well, I'll turn it down if he starts doing it again, but he was literally saying, he said, mommy, mommy and daddy, come back here. I was like, oh my gosh, go to sleep. Here's my update. I'm 36% of the way through this book, something like that. Um, it's something. <laughs> it's, it's not very good. Like I could stop right now and it would be fine. Like I could just quit and I would not care what happened. It'd be okay. But I'm kind of committed at this point just because I'm like, well, it's ancient Egypt and maybe something will happen. And honestly, I just don't want to do enough another book for this vlog, which is a sad reason to continue. But what I was thinking is like, you know, the first book I read was way better than I expected and really good. The second book was like way worse than I expected and I DNF'd it. And then this one's probably the more mediocre option. So like I said, I'm about a third of the way through and 
it's it's giving me divine rivals by vibes and honestly at the very beginning i think it even says i'll have to find it i don't know exactly where it's at but somewhere in here like the author literally put a dedication oh the dedication page for rebecca ross who fell in love with egypt as i wrote the first draft who cheered me on even as i reached dead ends and who swooned when wit first walked across the page I did not swoon when he walked across the page. I didn't swoon. I've not done any, I've not felt anything about this book. It's just sort of like words on a page. And it made me realize that there's just sort of a difference in like an author and a writer. Um, or I don't, I don't know which one I'd say is which. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. But what I'm trying to say is that I feel like some people are just like true natural writers. Like their actual writing and everything they put, the way they put everything together is just so seamless and like they can, you know, think about their word choice and their sentence structure and their character development and the themes and the dialogue and the pacing of the story and the, um, the narrator's kind of voice, the, uh, the tone, the really everything, the similes, the metaphors, like everything comes together so perfectly. And I feel like so few authors are so good at really, truly crafting that and like making it seem natural. But then some people can just like, they just sit down, they just write. And like, this is, I feel like most books are like that where it's like, okay, they're just people just writing. They're just writing. <laughs> they're not like, I don't know geniuses not that every writer has to be a genius I guess but I don't know I'm thinking like Anne Rice and George R. R. Martin and books uh v Vicious by V.E. Schwab like they just seem just seamlessly crafted and they're just like perfect and so many books are not and like I just don't even know how some of these books get published not that they're bad they're just so mediocre like why are people publishing these books <laughs> I don't know who out there is loving this book. Like who loves, if there anyone out there absolutely loves this book and gave it five stars, like why? Let me know <laughs> in the comments down below because I think it's so boring. Like just, it's so slow moving. It's, it's trying to be like Divine Rivals. It's like trying to be slow moving. It's like the author thinks that that's going to make it good. And it's not because I don't care. Nothing is like, oh, nothing is interesting. Oh my gosh. Just go watch The Mummy. Just just forget this book and just go watch The Mummy and The Mummy Returns, which I actually really liked just as much as I did The Mummy. And maybe even better. <laughs> my thoughts. I don't know. It's, it's not what I wanted. And I'm going to keep reading for no good reason. And I'll update you when I'm like... 60 something 66 percent through fingers crossed i don't dnf it i mean i don't hate picking it up i just i feel totally indifferent i'm numb i'm numb to this book i feel nothing when i read it okay it's been a hot minute since i've updated you i can't honestly tell you the last time i vlogged and told you what was happening <laughs> um but it's the end of spring break i'm having a black cherry seltzer mm -hmm pretty good but the reason why I wanted to update you very quickly is because I did decide to DNF what the river knows and I can't remember if I told you that or not did I tell you I was thinking about DNFing it oh my gosh it's gonna seem silly because of course in the clip before this it probably told you <laughs> but it's been so long for me I think I made it about a third or a fourth no it was more than a third a fourth is less than a third that makes no sense <laughs> at least a third of the way through um maybe even closer to half but I it was 40%. Oh, who cares? It doesn't matter. Um, I don't care what happens. I don't care if it gets better. I don't care if they finally get to go on an adventure in Egypt and actually do something exciting and go and see a tomb or whatever. I can already tell that this is not the book for me because the author is trying to do, it's trying to be like Divine Rivals. I should have known. I saw the little thing in the beginning where she literally dedicated this book to Rebecca Ross, the author of Divine Rivals, and I should have known right then that that is basically what the pace of this book is. It's like the same pace as Divine Rivals. And she's like, oh, if I make it slow and historical, they'll get really connected to the characters and they'll, no, no, that is not what's happening. It's just slow and boring. Um, I just don't care. I mean, it's not terrible. I could finish this book. And just like I could have finished Divine Rivals, would it still be very good? No, it would still be like a two or two and a half star. Maybe the plot would get more exciting. I don't know. I'll probably read a plot synopsis and just see what happens. Um, I'll probably use ChatGPT, see if it can tell me. I don't know. Um, it's just not comparing it to Indiana Jones and some, the mummy and making it sound like it's exciting. The, like there's no magic even. It, there's supposed to be magic. You know, I honestly forgot there was supposed to be magic in this book. And like two times, I think since the beginning, it has vaguely mentioned that there's like a magical thing and I'm like oh yeah this is fantasy <laughs> it does not feel like fantasy at all yet like I'm sure there's maybe a little bit more of that later on but as of where I left off it was just sort of a romance and it's his, kind of historical and that was basically it so I'm DNFing it and here's the deal I feel bad for this vlog because I just expected to find more books that I enjoyed I mean we know I loved the naturals 
we know I DNF'd Divine Rivals and now I'm DNFing What the River Knows. So I've decided that instead of just doing three books, I was gonna stop the vlog here, but because I DNF'd the last two, we have to find one more book I can get through. <laughs> so when I find another YA book, hopefully soon, um, I'm in the middle of a couple of other things, but I will update you again when I find another YA book and we will try one more time to, even if I don't love it, I don't think I'll ever find one in this vlog at least that I love as much as this one. But when I find one that I can at least make it through and not DNF, I will update you again. Hello, it's car update time again, as always, because when else is there time to film except in the car <laughs> driving from daycare to school? I just had to let you know that I did indeed read a fourth young adult book. I just did not vlog it. <laughs> so I just wanted to briefly mention it here because it was a, a pretty good success, a, a mild success, I would say. Not as a wild success as the first one, uh, The Naturals, was, but I wanted to end this vlog, vlog more on a positive note. So I did read Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller, and I kind of vlogged a little bit of it in one of my little running videos so you can check it out there if you want to see more I could link it down below if you're really really interested but I went into this with kind of low expectations <laughs> because it was pitched to me as you know female Jack Sparrow basically um, adventure fantasy element romance I thought I don't know we know fantasy romance not good for me but Pirates of the Caribbean is my favorite movie of all time and I wound up basically the first 75% of this book I would say was like four stars so shocking right like shocking it was good it's like it was really interesting to see what it would be like to be in the head of a character like Jack Sparrow because you never know his motives and he is so kind of morally gray and you're like what really is his plan what is he up to what is he doing well in this you're inside the main character's head from first person point of view you know present tense which is not my favorite but it was really interesting to see her actual motives. Like you did know what she was doing and how she was literally manipulating everyone all the time. <laughs> and so that, I actually found that aspect very, very intriguing. I thought the author did a great job with imagining what that character would actually really be like. Um, I enjoyed the, the characters as well. I liked the sort of romance. It's not really a romance. I mean, it kind of was, but it, I didn't feel like the romance was a huge aspect of it. So that was good. But the last like 25% of the book, I just didn't like the plot. I didn't like what happened. I thought it was really just kind of silly. <laughs> <laughs> it just came out of nowhere. Whereas the entire first 75%, she's stuck on board this ship and she's trying to find part of a treasure map. There's like three pieces of this treasure map that these three different pirate kings or pirate lords had. Her dad's obviously the pirate king. And she is wants to be on the ship. She wants to be kidnapped by these people. She gets kidnapped on purpose and wants to stay on their ship in their brig and escape every night to look for the map. And I liked all that part. I was shocked that it, she stayed on the ship the entire time. Like the entire 75% of the book, she is on that one ship <laughs> doing that one thing. But I still really liked it. But then the last 70, 25% is something totally different and it was weird and it was just so different than the rest of the book. It was bizarre to me. I don't know. It sounded like something that should have been saved for the sequel. Like I feel like the second book should have been the whole plot of like what the last 25% of this was. I don't know. It was weird. There were some interesting reveals. One twist I did see coming. One twist I did not see coming. Um, so because the last little bit was not good for me, <laughs> I gave like a maybe two and a half stars for that last little bit. I think I'm going to take this down to like a 3.5. So a 3.5 I feel like is pretty good for a young adult book. It's for, especially for an adventure, pirate, fantasy, romance kind of thing. Um, the fantasy is not like a huge element. I mean, it kind of is, but not really. It's more adventure and stuff. So I really enjoyed it though. I would definitely recommend this. So I'm going to call this book a success. Welcome to the end of the video. I just wanted to wrap this up really quickly while I'm getting ready to go for a run. And that is just to say that I call this vlog actually a success. Yes, I DNF two books, but I finished two and gave them higher than a three star rating. <laughs> one of which was like four stars or even four and a half. The other one being like three and a half, maybe 3.75 if he's for lucky. So I'm going to call this vlog a success and I think I'm going to do it again. I need to see, maybe I should even try other genres because I always read the same genres. I need like a horror novel and then I'm not going to read historical fiction. I'm just not going to do it. But I guess I need a realistic fiction, which is like, ugh. maybe I need just a pure romance. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it again because obviously I'm a young adult librarian. <laughs> So I have to read young adult books like for my job and they're usually fast reads too. So if you have any suggestions of books you think I might like, then please let me know down below and I'm going to continue on with two of those series. So I'm going to call it a success, way more successful than I expected. I thought I'd DNF like every book for this vlog or I'd say they're all bad and all young adult books are terrible, but it's not the case. So anyway, I will talk to you guys again later. Thank you so much for watching and bye.